It's me, Mikey Pipes. Did you miss me? I missed you. Ladies and gentlemen, I missed you. And we are basically days away from this channel hitting 20,000 subscribers. I am blown away by the amount of support and love from the entire community. I am absolutely blown away. And I'm so blown away that I've arranged to have one of our newest corporate channel sponsors sponsor the 20,000 subscriber giveaway. They are putting their money where their mouth is and we're gonna buy some Milwaukee gear and tools and we're gonna throw in some Lock and Var swag, some Pipe Doctor hats, shirts, stickers, you name it. There's, it's gonna be raining, raining so much crazy swag and merch that you're gonna wanna, you're, you're gonna be drowning in it. You be Mikey Pipes, throw me a life preserver. I'm drowning, I'm drowning in the swag. I'm dragging, drowning, I'm, help me. Send the buoy, I need a buoy to save me. I know I'm crazy. I know I'm crazy, that's why you guys love me, because I'm effing retarded nuts. No, let me take that back, you know, because it's not politically correct to say that R word, but I'm a lunatic. I really am. And I love each and every single one of you. But anyway, in this video coming up, this service call, customer has a central air conditioning system that is blowing warm air inside the house and the outdoor unit does nothing happens. He checked his breakers and we're heading out there to see what's going on. Stay tuned, you're not gonna wanna miss it. No air conditioning? I'm here to save the day. <laughs> Hi, Sam. How are you doing? Hi, Sam. How are you? Having a little uh, little uh, camping trip in the base in the garage? No. We had a bunch of guests over, and um, I sent the kids, so we had like a lot of people. Okay. So Throw the kids and put them in the garage. The kids, but you know what? It poured. It poured. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect it. Now I gotta dry it out, but I think it's supposed to rain later today. So oh. Leave it up. oh, thank you, sir. What's going on today? What's not working? Hi, right. good morning. Um, so yesterday we noticed that um, when we turned it on. Okay. Yeah. It would come on, and it sounded like air was going in. Okay. But. The air coming out was not cool. All right. And when I went around to the outside um, piece. The outdoor unit? Yeah. Okay. The, it wasn't spinning. All right, let's go see that. Let me just get a shoe. Yeah. <laughs> let's go see what's going on. Did you have a good weekend at least? Uh. Yeah. My wife's father passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks. Uh, but that's why, you know, we had like a. There's just a power here or anything. Who's in? Well, I hear the contactor on. So. Now we expect to see what's going on. I assume you checked the circuit breaker panel? Yes. Everything is on? Yes. Okay, let me get some tools to it. All right, we have the contactor pulled in. Looks like we got a uh, four ton R22 system. Condensers from February 2012. All right, no low pressure or high pressure switch is present. So either the voltage is not there or something's electrically wrong. I took out the quarter and screw on both sides of the panel. Now we're going to see what's going on in here. Alright, as you can see, we have some burnt wires on this contactor. Alright, let's just char it up. Let me just grab my non-contact tester first. The fluke. Turn it on. Let's make sure we don't have voltage here. L1, L2. Okay. chart up there but I still have connection there hmm 
Let's see. Let's see. Let me take these wires off and then see if I have voltage when I plug in a disconnect. It doesn't look like this is the cause. It's not burnt off completely. Did a horrible job with it though, but it's not burnt off completely. See the wiring is pretty burnt up and this contactor smells like burnt plastic. It really does smell like burnt plastic. It's not good. It's not good. We're gonna have to check that out next, but now that the wiring is separate here, let's see. Let's see what happens when we plug this in. Let me just get the voltmeter. Make sure we have. Make sure we have 240 volts. I got my fluke. All right, one there, one there, and I have 200, 240. So we're good there. We're good there. Let's check out this contactor. I'm gonna replace that. All right, I have a contactor, new contactor in place. It's a two pole contactor. I got the most of the wiring hooked up, low voltage. I have yellow on the left and brown on the right of this contactor. I just wanna show you this thing. Look at this, it just broke apart. See that? So even though she was pulled in, and she smells like burnt plastic too. She smells like burnt plastic. Well, let's take an ohm reading and see what we have on this. So, 32. If I was testing this during PM, oh, and I went down to 20. Still on the high side. But if I was testing this on a PM, I would have replaced it. All right, new capacitor, I'm sorry, <laughs> new contact is in place. I got my amp meter hooked up to L1. I'm gonna see what kind of amperage we're working with when I plug this bad boy in. Pretty decent, nothing extravagant. No spike, which is pretty good. 12.7, Quite happy with that. No uh, real jump, start up. That looks good. Quite pleased. All right. Climbing up a little bit now, though. Let's see what that goes to. Give that a minute or two. So minimum is 35. Max is 45 on this four-ton condenser R22 system. We got a lot of heat being discharged out of it. 13.6. Let this run for a little bit. Let me not touch that. Leak out all the refrigerant. Alright, let me tell you what happened, what we did. Yes. What I saw. This part right here. It won't bite if you want to touch it. Well, it's falling apart actually. Uh, that's called a contactor. And its job is to receive a signal from the thermostat okay. and will allow the switch, which is this, mm -hmm. uh, to get power to the compressor and to the fan. Okay. So when I took the cover off, I saw some of the wiring going to this was kind of was melted and burning away, oh. uh, which That's is good. usually a sign of maybe too much power going through the system, okay. maybe a bad compressor or a bad fan motor. Um, but then I took this out of the unit, I took the cover off, which is normally here, and the thing just fell apart in pieces. Um, and then I tested the, you know, the coil of it, and it was higher than it normally would be. But it was shot anyway. Okay. Uh, I put a new one in, I cut back the burnt wires, and then I tested the power, the amperage, and it's well under the rating of it. You know, okay. it requires a minimum breaker of 30 amps, maximum of 40, and it's at 13 and a half. So <laughs> I would chalk this up as normal wear and tear. Okay. So nothing big, nothing out of the ordinary, but you know, me, you know, to, to prevent this from the future from happening, um, this is one of the components we test during like a spring tune-up or maintenance okay. visit. Um, we may or may not have caught this. 
Yeah. I'm just calling like it is because right. it may have tested fine then, but yeah. normally, you know, we test certain certain components and we can see when they're starting to wear and okay. yes, it's still working, but the worst case scenario, you were out air conditioning for a day or two. Yeah. No big deal. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, basically the entire service call from entry to completion. And I finished up the service call by showing him the part that failed, explain, explaining to him the purpose of this part and how it operates and how to prevent this from happening again. So we identified the situation, we corrected the situation, and we informed the client on ways to prevent the situation from happening again. And those three steps are key, Daniel, 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 Daniel. are key to a successful service call. All right, stay tuned for more exciting, fresh episodes from the one and only Mikey Fife.